Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks, and today's project is the Ferragamo shoe. Now, let me tell you about this shoe. Um, I wasn't going to do a video on this, and halfway through the job, um, I posted some pictures of the finished one. While I was working, I finished one of them. This is the same shoe, okay? And uh, somebody requested if I could do a video of it. And I stopped the job and I said, okay, I'll, I'll see what I can come up with. Okay, so basically what we're going to do. Actually, let me show you some pictures of what it should look like. All right, so the only thing that I'm not going to show you guys is me stripping it off. Basically, you know, I don't, I don't have a video of that, but... It was a very simple job. It, I used some acetone and just just started wiping it down, wiping it until all that finish came off. Now, there was a lot of finish on there, so you have to turn the rag over the clean side and keep on wiping and keep on wiping until you've got this. Now, once that gets done, once we dye the uppers, we're going to work on the soles. Now, even though this is a Ferragamo, you know, to me. This is not that great of a quality, unfortunately. It's a molded one-piece sole, okay, that's literally just glued on the uppers. That's all it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a thin rubber sole here, okay? Call that a sole guard. Now, before we do that, we're going we're gonna to glue everything together again, okay? And from here, from the shank area, we're going to stitch the soles, Blake stitch it, to the uppers. And then glue a piece of thin rubber on there. So when it gets done, it's going to look like this. You see the stitches here? These go underneath the thin sole guard there. Basically, it stitches the, the sole itself to the uppers from the inside of the shoe. I'll show you guys how to do that a little later. And then that's kind of secured on there. That's not going to come loose. And then the sole on top of that. Turned out pretty good. It's in like a reddish mahogany tone. But, you know, there's no way we're going to bring that, that color back exactly the same. So we kind of have a little bit of a um, little bit of a choice of which way we go to. You can do maybe like a like a brownish shades or a little bit of reddish shades, um, dark brown, you know, stuff like that. So anything is possible at this point. But this is what we chose to do. And it turned out pretty good. All right. So let's get started. I'll show you how to dye the uppers and um, we'll take it from there. How you doing? I feel like a doctor today wearing gloves. Make that one viewer happy that uh, told me that I had dirty hands. There you go. Now I got gloves on. All right, so this is the Phoebe's tan, okay? So basically I just I did it with the Phoebe's tan first regular dauber there's nothing to it on this on this particular job just take the dauber and, and dye it now it looks pretty dark once it um, once it gets on there but the idea is that once you dye it, you've got to let it cure. you got to let it dry. So it can kind of even out in the tone. You can't rush these jobs. you got to let it, you got to let it sit. Take your time. So while this one is going to be drying, I'll, I'll move on to other things just to keep myself occupied. Oh, maybe go smoke a little hookah and some coffee. Hey, you guys got the right mindset today. But it is a little early. I don't know about that. Not for coffee. No, heck no. Never too early for coffee. It's, it's six in the morning here. East Coast time. 
nice and quiet. I like it. I like coming in the shop. Today is Monday. We're closed today. <coughs> I've got to catch up on my organization from Saturday because Saturdays get a little hectic. And we're open from 7 to 1. So 1 o'clock, I tend to get out of here. Because I, you know, I get to do stuff with the family. We used to be open from 9 to 5 Saturdays, and we were just slammed, you know, all day. So by the time I got home, it was like 6 o'clock, and I was dead tired. There was no way I was going to do anything. I was exhausted. And my kids were getting a little older. I said, you know what? i got to figure something out. So... I said, why don't I just open a little early and then close early? That way, we'll, in the afternoons, we'll have some time to go do stuff with the kids. And that's what I did. 7 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, I was afraid that that would affect the business because Saturdays are my busiest days. People do errands Saturdays. I understand that. And um, when I started it, I was looking at the numbers and my volume went down 50% on Saturday, which made me a little nervous. And um, then one day I just said, you know what, let me look at the overall numbers for the week. And sure enough, that didn't change in a negative way. It changed in a positive way, which was, you know, went up. So somehow, when customers couldn't come on Saturday, they would come during the week, which was a which was a which was great. It was a blessing. So, so now we've got Saturdays to to go do stuff with the kids. It wasn't bad. So this Saturday I went to a car show with one of my boys. The other one stayed home. I got a two seater car. I got to decide which is which one to take with me. So the little one decided to go all right so we're gonna let this sit okay and um, when we come back we'll we'll touch it up a little bit more then we're gonna put a second coat on which is the mahogany color all right let's continue this is what the shoe looks like after drying okay now you don't have to use a brush like this okay I just grabbed this because it was close by I'm doing it, I'm using it because I used it on the other, you know, shoes like this. I want them to match. But if you got a dauber or sponge, if you're not doing any sort of patina work, then, then just, you know, you can use whatever you want. Again, I just happened to grab this because this was close by. If I had a dauber, I would have used the dauber. But like I said, since I used it on the other shoe, want to do the same so you want them to match now after this one well after the other one dried okay to me it was a little bit too dark and um, so what I did was I removed a little bit of the surface dye with a little bit of acetone that kind of lightened the shade a little bit. Now, I don't know, there was no particular reason that I did the, that I did the tan first, right? I was just trying that color and it just, to me, it was just a little too light, okay? So then I went with the second coat of the mahogany. It wasn't that I did that for a particular reason. I just did that because just experimenting with tan, when it dried, it was a little bit too light. Now I had some walnuts and and um, different brown shades that I could have done, but I kind of I kind of like this reddish tone a little bit. I kind of think it makes it look pretty rich. So that's the only reason. There was no rhyme or reason that I did both of them same color. You know, both of them tan first and then this second coat. And that's that. Okay, we're now going to let this one dry. 
and come back and lighten it up a little bit just kind of wipe across it with a little bit of acetone to remove some of that dark areas and then we'll condition polish them up and we'll continue all right let's continue all right so this is what we have when it dries I want to just lighten up a little bit in some of the areas a little bit of that comes off not much this is turpentine I'm not using acetone acetone's a little bit harsher soles are still flopping take care of that This is uh, this is cognac number ten. You could you could do a little bit lighter if you want to be on the reddish side. You can use maybe like a burgundy or or cordovan color. We want to maintain that that light shade as much as we can. So this will this will work just fine. Don't forget the tongue. All right, so we're gonna let that dry for a minute or two and then come back and buff it and then put a couple of more coats of conditioners on there oh i skipped that uh, by the way i i did condition it i forgot to mention to you guys um i've got big four this is a saphir bottle that i reuse and i put big four in there big four conditioners it's really nice uh, it's a really nice product all right let's continue now there's different options for cementing polyurethane material to leather um, there is a company it's a German company I don't have their product because I didn't really care for them too much it just didn't work for me sometimes you've got to be a chemist to figure out what material is requiring primers hardeners and green primer yellow primer I, I just I, I tried it just did not work for me maybe I'm not a maybe I'm not as smart as the other guys this is super glue okay we use this in this you know in this business for plastic products you know like keel lifts and that are that are made out of plastic we're trying to glue something to it what I'm going to do here we're going to put a bead right on the edge a little bit on the inside too I'm gonna put in the press let's get this sucker started I'm gonna put in the press and let it sit there then we're gonna come back and stitch that on there to secure it we'll glue the heel and put that in the press also got to do them different times so we'll do the sole this time i'll turn it around and show you guys It. 
let it sit there. Maybe a couple of minutes it'll pop up by itself and we'll continue. All right, let's continue. All right, now that we've got the heel secured, the sole secured, okay, we're going to start working on the sole guards. This is Svig, S-V-I-G. It's an Italian product. This is the Crispino pattern. I like this product. It's very good. Now, sometimes some people will do, they'll, they'll, they'll cut across, do a straight line. Most of the sole guards do come like that. Like, uh, for example, there's something like that, the Vibram sole guard. I think this is the wellness pattern, which, you know, comes in a straight across like that. But I don't know. I like, I like to do it in a curb. I think it gives it a little bit more elegance, you know. Besides, it kind of follows that heel pattern. We kind of nicknamed this as a D curve. I mean, I didn't make it popular, but I, I, I kind of started it to use it a lot, and we just figured, you know, we'll call it a D curve. Now, I always like to score right on that line and take a little piece out. It's almost like countersinking the new piece onto the old one. So there's no, so the seams are like this and not one sitting on top. You want to kind of make it flow a little better. But is it important? Is it structurally necessary? No. But again, it's just, you know, matter of the looks of it is going to look very nice. It's going to look like it's part of part of the design. So once that gets sanded down, we're going to restitch it and then we're going to glue it on here. All right, let's continue. All right, so this is basically the out, no, not, let me start over. I was going to say outsole stitch, but it's not. This is the Blake stitch machine, right? They call it a McKay also. Okay. Ah, oh, and I just broke the thread. Woohoo! No worries, we'll rethread it. God dang. You know, that's it. I gotta have my coffee. Gotta have my coffee. Gotta have my coffee. All right, I'll show you guys how I do this too. Maybe I won't. No, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I'll be right back. I'm coming. I'm here. Not going anywhere. Don't leave me. You thought I could leave you? You can't do that. All right, so. You use a needle to rethread the machine. If that if that if that's not in the right place, then there's a there's a release mechanism on the thread, and you can't you cannot basically pull the thread if that mechanism is not is not kind of released. You know that's why they call it a release mechanism because you got to release it. Anyway, so when I pulled up, on <coughs> excuse me, when I pulled on it, it didn't it didn't work too well. All right, so there's a shoe. We've opened up a channel here because what happens is that when you, if you don't open a channel when you stitch it, then you put the sole on, it becomes a little raised bump, and we don't want that. Let's see if I can turn the light on so you guys can see it. Is that better? Not really.
having tension issues with this machine. One of these days I'll get it right. For now it's going to have to do. So you see what we did, right? Went inside the shoe and stitched the sole stitch the sole from to the footbed on the inside of the shoe all right you guys all right let me see if i can do this better for you show you oh lord things i gotta do for you guys there you go you see it now yeah that's the stitch So basically it's securing the footbed inside to the outsole tight. That way the sole won't come loose again. And you can't really wear the, the stitches down because the sole is going to be on top of it. You get my drift? All right, let's continue. Where are you? There you go. Hey! Look, I got a new filter. <laughs> it was for that one guy who complained that I had a bad filter. All right, let's get back to business. Now, this is a basically a polyurethane material, okay? All-purpose cement does not hold on this. So we need to coat the surface with a primer, which this works pretty good. This is a flexible super glue, okay? So the way this works is that we put a coat on and let it dry And then come back and put all-purpose cement on there. Masters all-purpose cement. And then once that dries, you heat both surfaces up. And you can't really hammer too hard. It's just a matter of pressing with both, both you know, both materials together to get the air pockets out, and you're done. Now this sucker is very strong, okay? You should not breathe this in. That's why I put it in front of the fan, the exhaust to suck it all up. So once that dries, we'll put the other glue and let's continue. So now we've got the Masters all-purpose cement on there. This is my heat lamp, by the way. It heats things up. Hence, heat lamp. Oh, check these out. I'm working on these the same time as I'm working on that. Pair of Allen Edmonds. Shell Cordovan. One didn't match the other, so I, I clean and I dyed it, and I'm, I'm in the process of matching them both. They're much better matched than what they were. Also, a pair of uh, Floor Shine Imperials. By the way, my favorite shoe. Soles are being done. So you know, I multitask. I don't just work on one project. There's, there's, there's so many things going on physically, and then there's so many things going on mentally that, that it would make your head spin if you saw. So that heats up just a little bit, not too much. If you leave it in there, it will melt the, the, the material because it is very hot. Now, I wish I could say it's hammer time. But, okay, little little pressure hammer time? Does that work? Whoa, suckers, this sucker's on there. Once it gets on there, it's on there. Beautiful. I'm just going to tap this together on here, right? Not really hammer it. Remember, hammering will actually hammering hammering harder will actually do the opposite. It'll 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 bounce back, and it won't uh, it won't adhere to the surface. So this way, you just kind of get rid of the air pockets. I know you guys are disappointed. Now I'm going to put it in the, put in the press and let it kind of 
cool down inside, let it cure. And once it's cured, we can remove it, we can sand it. So what you guys up to today? It's a Monday. <coughs> it's a Monday. I've got a couple of projects going on. I got a... Oh, that's my thumb. Hey, thumb, how you doing? I swear people in the business are probably cringing now whenever they see me do stuff like that. Who cares? Really, I mean, who cares? Really, I mean, who cares? It's a video. It's not like a... <laughs> that won't stay still. Okay, here. I'll meet you guys down here. Who cares? It's a video, right? I mean, am I going to get an award for best videography? No. No. Who cares? Who cares? I have a... My wife's cousin from Bulgaria and um, it's funny how he says who cares he says who cares he's got the really heavy accent who cares so I imitate him every time I say that you know brings a smile to my face all right so we're gonna continue while um, I know no hammer time okay oh get your earphones off Okay? Satisfied? Let's continue. Welcome back. I'm gonna take a little break and talk a little bit. Top 10 questions, top 10, maybe top three questions people ask me, right? Why do your hands shake so much? I don't know. I've been to several doctors and and they all said I'm normal. Well, maybe not mentally, but physically. Um, I've been shaking since I was 10 years old. Okay? Since, some people say since the war started in Lebanon where I grew up. Maybe that had an effect on me. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, all my life I've, I've drawn and, um, and I'm artistic in that way where I don't, the handshaking doesn't have any effect. And I used to draw some of the, you know, detailed pictures. And uh, I don't know why I shake. And sometimes when I'm having too much caf coffee, caffeine, and I'm tired, you know, the hand shakes a little bit more. So that's one of the main reasons, I guess. So. I reassure you, I assure you guys that I'm okay. Okay, it's not, it's nothing, it's nothing that um, hinders me from from working, you know. And um, and I appreciate you guys' concern. What other questions? What kind of boots or shoes I wear? I wear Alden Indie boots, which I've had for about eight years, and I resold them about three times. I wear them every day, constantly. I'm on my feet all day, and it's it's the most comfortable boots I've ever owned. Not because they're Alden, they're just they're just comfortable. It could be something else. I could tell you guys that what it was if it wasn't Alden. What else? Um, of course, I can't think any top of my head now. I can't think of any more. I'm sure you guys come up with something. All right, so I need your help. Almost fifty thousand subscribers, which is phenomenal if you ask me now what do I do do I do giveaways or or how do I thank you guys I just I don't know I've never done this before I mean I've got I've got some shoes that were donated and um, they're nice shoes nice Goodyear welted shoes that I can resole and and give away which will be like a brand new shoe and what about the ladies out there? You know, what do we do for them? 
maybe um, maybe we're storing a bag or something, you know. I've got my shirts on order. They were supposed to be here last week, but they're not. And I'm thinking about giving those maybe like a $20 value, $20 to sell them. Um, I think the post office charges like 5 or $7 for, for postage, like an envelope, padded envelope. So maybe $27 total for a shirt? What do you guys say? And maybe what I can do is give away a couple of shirts? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to choose winners, you know? I've never done this before, so... Some things for you guys to think about and help me out. Okay. But I'm very, uh, I'm very happy that you guys are following me and, uh, and watching my videos. It's, it's much, much appreciated. Sometimes um, we don't realize how lucky we are um, because we get used to our normal day-to-day -day life, you know, and um, the things that we have, some people don't have. You know, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I went to the Middle East a couple of years back to visit some friends, and, and literally, if you wanted a shower, you had to turn the boiler on to let it heat up two hours probably before the water was ready to take a shower. Um, you know, hot water on the faucet. You know, um, sometimes they cut the water off. Uh, you know, sometimes they cut the electricity off. So, those minor things that, that we we have, we don't, we don't think about. But don't take it for granted, okay? There's a lot of people who, who don't have just the basic things to live on, you know? I was walking down the street here early in the morning to get a, to get a breakfast uh, sandwich and saw somebody on the bench who's all huddled up. And it's fall, it's, it's chilly in the mornings. I, you know, I said, um, I told him, I said, how are you? He goes, I'm great, man, how you doing? I said, I'm okay, you know, I appreciate you asking. And just for the fact that he said he's great, you know, not one, he didn't complain, oh, I'm hungry, give me money or anything. I mean, sometimes you got to be grateful for what you got. If you, if you, if you see what you have and appreciate it, those things will become more valuable to you. And you won't say, oh, I want this, I want that, you know, materialistic things that, that don't bring you happiness, you know? Appreciate life for what you got. Not all of us are, are you know, are wealthy or great shape in our life, you know, but we are who we are. That's it. If you want to better yourself, go right ahead. Focus on yourself and do better. Get a better job, start working out, exercising. Whatever, you know, you gotta love life. I mean, we're only here for a short time and, and then we're done. I was waiting in line to get my sandwich. I overheard somebody behind me complaining that they had to go to work, you know. And I'm just kind of like eavesdropping. I didn't say anything. It's none of my business, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to do what I do because I love what I do. So if you've got a job you're not happy with, then find something that makes you happy. Then you'll be so glad that you wake up every day that you're going to do what you love, you know? Anyway, so much for that. All right, so I'm going to enjoy my, uh, my coffee and hookah time a little more by myself. Without you guys, come on. Come on, I need to be alone sometimes. All right. Let's continue. All right, welcome back. We're done with another project. I mean, I call it presentable. Is it hundred percent? Is it brand new? No. It's presentable. The guy can wear it without any issues, and the uppers are cracking or flaking or, or different shades. So I think uh, I think the customer will be happy. Again, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. 
And if you like this video, you should hit that bell button to get a notification every time I upload a video. See, I'm learning the lingo, right? Upload, a notification, the bell, all that kind of stuff. So I'm learning as I'm going along. All right, so we'll see you guys again on the next project. If you have any questions, just email me at betos at yahoo.com, and I'll see if I can answer it and, and help you guys out. Once again, thank you so much. Take care.